Good morning, dear ladies, dear gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear distinguished participants. I apologize for not being able to be with you physically in this important conference, but however, I am happy to be with you virtually and uh, I am honored to give you this keynote talk uh, through this uh, video recording. Well, the topic of my presentation is uh, towards a global information network on assistive technology information. But before coming to the topic, I would like to introduce myself. Who am I? As a background, I am an electrical engineer. I graduated at the Padua University over 40 years ago. My main work experience was at Fondazione Dognocchi, which is a big network of rehabilitation centers based in Milano, but spread all over Italy. And there I worked as head of assistive technology research. During this period, I did a lot of educational activities. In particular, I was a director of a postgraduate course on assistive technology, and I'm still now doing this kind of, of work. I am, I have been, and I am currently the president of ISTIN, the Global Assistive Technology Information Network. And uh, I have also had the opportunity to be president of the AAAT, which is the Association for the Advancement of Assistive Technology in Europe. Well, about my private life, I am married with uh, Lucia and I have four children quite grown up now. So, what I'm doing now, I, I work as an independent consultant on assistive technology. I am based in Belluno, Italy, which is a beautiful town in a beautiful mountain area of the Dolomites. You see on the left on the map where Belluno is in northeast Italy. You see a small picture of this town. And this other picture gives you a flavor of what the Dolomite mountains are. So I'm quite lucky to be in that area. However, however, sorry, however, what I'm going to say is mainly based on my over 30 years of work in the Fondazione uh, Dognocchi in this network of rehabilitation centers. Uh, in my activity, I was mainly involved in uh, uh, assistive technology information. I was involved in education of professionals and users. I was involved also in the individual assessment of assistive solution for the people with disabilities. And this gave me the opportunity to work with a lot of other professionals, medical doctors, speech therapists, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, teachers, psychologists, and, and so on. Because you know, when you have to work with the client to find an, an assistive solution, you need a lot of competences and expertise of many people of many professions. And then last but not least, I've been involved quite a lot in research and development about advanced assistive technology products and methodologies in the field of assistive technology provision. One of, uh, of uh, the activities who took uh, a lot of time in my uh, professional activity was the management of the Italian National Information Portal on Assistive Technology, the SIVA portal, which is uh, now in Italy uh, the prime uh, reference information resources for people with disabilities, for professionals in the field, and the portal helps the person to know what assistive products are in the market and guides uh, to choose the assistive product meeting each individual need. But of course, information alone is not enough. People, uh, after knowing that assistive products exist that may solve the problem, they need uh, uh, to go to centers where there is a team with expertise, centers where you have a, a, a comprehensive set of assistive products you can try out, learn how to use, 
until uh, finding what is the best solution uh, for you. Uh, this network of assistive technology centers uh, is called the, the SIVA uh, network. Uh, the SIVA network doesn't provide or sell the assistive technology. It works for the assessment of the person's need to find the suitable assistive products and then to recommend them. Then the person uh, with this recommendation goes to the local health authority if this technology can be provided by the state or uh, has to buy it through other uh, with their own money or through other schemes or donations. Well, when we speak about assistive technology, we speak of a big world of products supporting independent living and personal assistance in all areas of daily life. So we have uh, products for mobility, like wheelchairs, uh, adaptive cars, walking aids, and so on. We speak about uh, products for helping personal care, washing himself, uh, dressing, uh, cooking, uh, housekeeping, and so on. We speak about technology for the adaptation of work site for workers who need special arrangements on the work site to perform a productive and efficient work. We speak about technology helping assistance at home of, for example, elderly people. We speak about the design of mainstream products or facilities that uh, for everybody uh, designed in such a way that can be used also by elderly people or people with disability. Like, for example, this gentleman uh, sitting in the wheelchair in the picture who is uh, using the computer through a mouse uh, handled with the mouth. We speak about uh, technology to support uh, education of children in the school. We can speak about how to make the house collaborative uh, uh, to give some level of automation uh, to um, help to, to make the house doing uh, independently some function uh, that uh, so to release the person from the need to do it uh, by himself or herself. We can speak about technology for sport, for leisure. We can speak about prosthetics, which means uh, equipment replacing parts of the body, or orthotics, which means uh, devices uh, supporting parts of the body. We speak about uh, sensory aids, such as hearing aids. We speak about uh, technology to access the computers, the smartphone, the tablet, to access information and culture. So we have a, a lot of technology, can be high technology, low technology in all areas of life. Because there is a lot of people needing assistive products, of course, the first group of people needing assistive products are people with severe disability conditions. These people you see in the pictures cannot live without assistive products or cannot live a, a productive, a rewarding life without assistive products. But there are also uh, other very small problems in everyday life uh, where a person with disability can do without assistive technology, but with an assistive technology, this person can do it better, faster, in a, a more secure way, without making too much effort. As we can see in the pictures, starting from the left, you see the adaptation of a kitchen for a person in a wheelchair in order to make this lady independent in doing all the cooking and the housekeeping. On the left, you see the disabled children taking his brother. So in this case is the child <clears throat> uh, using his technology to, to bring the brother. On the, on the bottom left, you see a simple device to help a person who cannot bend down to wear the sockets. Then in the bottom, in the center, you see a pill organizer, which is for a person who has to take a lot of pill, pills during the day 
and uh, this helps to remember which pills I have to take on which day at what time. Then you see an adapted uh, glass and other things. So there are many, many people in the world needing assistive products. Actually, the definition of the World Health Organization of assistive products is quite broad. The definition speaks about any external product, including devices, equipment, instruments, or software, especially produced or generally available, the primary purpose of which is to maintain or improve an individual functioning and independence, and thereby promote their well-being. Assistive products are also used to prevent impairments and secondary health conditions. For the WHO, which means the World Health Organization, assistive products have become a very important issue. Um, this document, which is called the, the Priority Assistive Product List of the WHO, says that assistive products are the fourth pillar of the health strategies and policies at the same level of importance as vaccines, medicines, and medical devices. Well, now, uh, information on assistive technology is a very important topic. There are many assistive products exist, but it is difficult for, for the person who need them to know where, if, where they are and how to find that. So this is the, well, the reason why in 2005, uh, we started through, thanks to a European project, the Easting Network. The Easting Network is now, in the past, was a European network. Now is a worldwide network. So the official name is the Global Assistive Technology Information Network. Basically, the public appearance of this network is the Easting website. Here you see the home page. The website is accessible in many languages. Um, and this is not just Google translated uh, uh, information, is professionally translated information in 25 languages so far. But it is prepared for hosting an unlimited number of languages. Technically speaking, the Easting is not a database of assistive product in itself. It is a kind of search mechanism, search engine. It is composed of three tiers. Uh, it's a three-level architecture. You have a presentation tiers. This is the level that appears to the user's device. Device can be a mobile phone, can be a computer, can be a, a, a tablet or whatever else. Then we have the, the middle level, the application tier, where the real Easting engine is hosted. And at the lower level, we have the data tier, which is outside the Easting system. It is uh, the data, it, it is the, the level of the data which are hosted in the Easting partners databases. Actually, Easting is an aggregator of databases of many countries. In the first level, the user uh, accesses the system through a normal web browser on his or her device. In the real engine, we have a, a, a set of components based on Microsoft.NET framework that gets the user request, look into the data and uh, gets the information text the information and send it back to the user. And then in the data tier, we have uh, the database of the partners and a system that interacts, uh, that makes the links between the data and the engine. So when the user makes a request, this is processed, is sent to all the databases and uh, the data are collected from the databases, go back to the engine and are presented at the end of eventually to the to the user so uh, the, is the the user can search in various way he or, he or she can search for assistive products for companies for documents and uh, uh, can search uh, the products 
by ISO code. ISO is the international classification of assistive technology, can search by brand, model, by keywords, by a number of uh, parameters. And uh, at the result of research, this is an example you see, uh, in this case, uh, the user was searching for special keyboards for people with disability. He gets the list. At the top of the list are the most recently updated products. And you see from the source database that the first products come from the French national database, the second from the German national database, the third from the UK, and the fourth from the Italian database, and, and so on. And uh, when uh, you select each product, you get a complete technical records in your language, in the language you have selected. Or if it is free text, uh, this is uh, in your language, if it was originated from your country, or in English, it was not originated. If we look at the contents of, assisting, of, of, of the Easting system, we see that uh, uh, now there are a lot of products all over the world, almost 70,000 products uh, are uh, connected uh, to the Eastern system. The majority of them, as you see from this uh, diagram, belongs to the um, category of personal mobility and transportation. But then in decreasing orders, you see products for self-care activities, products for the, the home, furnishing fixture and uh, fi fixtures and other products. And uh, then you see products for communication and information management and so on. Of course, every day you make a search, you may get different results because the data are not inside the system, are fished from the different databases of the partners and each partner is updating every day their database. Who is running the uh, Eastern system? The, uh, the Eastern system is run by the Eastern Association, which is a, a non-for-profit body created in 2005 by some organization based in the European Union, and uh, which is recently evolved to a global uh, perspective with the goal to gradually become the worldwide assistive technology information hub. We have currently seven partners. Partners are organizations that operate national databases that feed the Easting system. Then we have affiliates organizations that are organizations that have no database, but they uh, maintain a specific ling language layer in the Easting system. And then we have 13 national contacts that are organizations that don't have any database, don't have, have a linguistic layers, but volunteer to serve as Eastern national contacts in other countries. This is very important because a user going to the Eastern system wants to put a question, a clarification. This question is sent to the national contacts of your country, not from a centralized body. So the answer is, will be given by somebody who knows about your country. If we look at all the databases that are connected to the Easting system, we found a wealth of information. Each of this portal, like the Italian civil portal, have a lot of facilities. Uh, just a quick look on the homepage of the Disabled Living Foundation from the UK database. This is the homepage of the Rehadat, the German uh, database. This is from Denmark, the national Danish database. This is from Belgium, and this is from Australia. So if you know the language of these partners, you can go also directly there and to find uh, um, uh, the information you need with a, a higher level of deepness than the, the, the one that you can find in the Easting network. However, the power of the Easting portal is that there is one door when, where you can enter and then you can be redirected to all the world from there. Now I come to the main conclusions. The first conclusion is that the Easting system has proven a feasible approach to aggregate assistive technology information resources from all over the world. The second message is that the Easting is not competing with national databases. It only aggregates 
information of international interest, while the national databases still are important because they provide comprehensive and detailed information for citizens of that country. That organization who participate in the Easting uh, find a big added value because thanks to this participation, you can help the, to improve your national system through the exchange of expertise all over the world. The ISTI network is not closed to the current, current members. It is open. Other members, other partners who want to join can make the application. And there is a procedure for judging the application and eventually admitting in the network. And the ambition of the network is to become truly global by having all major national databases connected and national contacts in most countries worldwide. We have one national contact here in Palestine and I'm happy to speak uh, in this conference also because of that. So thank you for your kind attention. I will say also in Italian, grazie per la vostra gentile attenzione. I apologize for not being able to say it in your beautiful language. Thanks for the attention. Goodbye.